You're welcome back. Uh, I did say that today is we're going to be talking about something which is really important, something that is killing some people, uh, especially not especially, killing uh, the women, and uh, that is cervical cancer. And so much is not uh, said about it, or rather, so much of our population does not even know about it and how to go about it. And we're very lucky that there is, there seem to be a vaccine for that. And Nigeria is uh, on the verge of having that vaccine come to us. So we're glad now that we're going to be joined by Dr. Nwango Bina Anthony, who is a medical practitioner that will help us throw more light on what cervical cancer is, and also Itoro Usoro, uh, the change leader Nguvu Collective. Let me start by welcoming Governor Obina to the program. Uh, I said Governor. <laughs> Dr. Obina, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Okay, and Itoro, welcome to the program as well. Thank you for having me. Okay, uh, we'll keep it short and simple because our time is fast spent. Uh, let's begin with Doctor. Give us an insight into what cervical cancer really is and the dangers that it poses to our uh, women folk. Okay. So cervical cancer is the cancer of the cervix. And when we mention cervix, cervix is part of the, a woman's uterus. we we'll call it uterus or womb. So the lower segment of uterus has a lower part of it called the cervix. And this cervix is the lower part of the uterus from where the baby passes through during delivery. So this part of the cervix, this part of the uterus called cervix, is prone to cancer called cervical cancer. The upper, the upper part of the uterus, the womb, has its own cancer, the endometrial cancer. But specifically today, we are talking about the cervical cancer, which is the cancer of this particular part of the uterus or womb called the cervical cancer. And this cancer is caused, 99% of this cancer is caused by human papilloma virus, HPV virus causes 99% of this cancer. And this human papilloma virus can be prevented. That's why we look at cervical cancer as a regrettable disease, because it can be prevented. It's in Nigeria, low-income countries, sub-Saharan Africa, who have high records of cervical cancer. Because in the Western countries, in developed countries, the vaccine is there. They are doing screening with this that cope the body of cervical cancer to the nearest minimum. So cervical cancer, it's something that we must know about, just like you said during your introduction. <coughs> most of most Nigerians doesn't know anything about cervical cancer. And that is why our foundation, Help the Woman Campaign, has been on the forefront to educate Nigerians on the need to know that there is cervical cancer and that this cancer can be prevented. It's not, it's not like other cancers that you may not have control over. It can be pre prevented through vaccination primary prevention, and it can also be prevented through screening, secondary, through secondary prevention, and then health education. So that's why we are here to talk about this cancer, for people to be aware. You will be surprised that the recent survey done by the, uh, our chairperson, Mr. Toro, at Abu Jazis, we discovered that out of 100 women, about less than 10 knows about cervical cancer, less than 10 those about cervical cancer. And this is a cancer that within, in the clinic, average cases of two, two to three cases, I see every day in clinic, two to three cases within a week, two to three cases. And those cases at that point, they are bloom cancer because early stages of this cancer, they are symptomatic. And because that's, the cervix is hidden, you will not know what is going on there unless you're screened. So, but you begin to know that something is going on there when the cancer becomes symptomatic. And when it becomes symptomatic, you may present with bleeding from the vagina, or you may present with a mass from the cervix. And at this, this stage, it's already advanced and it's difficult to treat at this stage. The prognosis is poor at this stage. So that's why we are here talking about this, that if it's detected early through screening, most of deaths can be prevented. And if young girls are vaccinated, you are vaccinated as early as between nine to 15 years, it's still extended up to 26 years, most of this cancer can be prevented because this human papilloma virus that causes 99% of this cancer is sexually transmitted. 
is through sexual contact. So if you can get vaccine to prevent one from inf being infected by this human papilloma virus, we can prevent more than 99% of the cervical cancer. Other ones from genetics, smoking, those are, are minimal compared to the burden of human papilloma virus, burden of it as regards to the cause of cervical cancer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to you to tell us the nitty gritty about the treatment and every other thing we need to know. But let me go to uh, Itoro first of all now. Uh, Itoro, tell us your experience. Um, we've just been told that you did advocacy, you did, uh, you did outreach, you did uh, sensitization, and you found out a lot of things. Give us an insight to how Nigerians react to this and how much awareness that they have on cervical cancer. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, for two years now, I've actually been on awareness campaigns, education, mostly in low and middle income areas of uh, the nation. And it will surprise you to note that so many women, I can say 90% of the persons I've actually met, they've not heard about it. They haven't heard about it uh, before. And um, the 10% that have heard about this issue, less than 10% uh, of that 10% have been screened. So they just know about this, but they do not go for screening. Just like uh, Project Director Dr. Obina rightly said, uh, this is actually preventable through awareness because a first step is for the people to know that this issue is actually there. And secondly, it should be screened for persons who have passed the vaccination stage. And I'm happy that the federal government currently have rolled out a vaccination program because with the vaccination now, uh, young girls will be vaccinated. And of course, the causative agent, which is the HPV, uh, will be reduced and eliminated. And at the end of the day, the burden of this menace will be reduced in our nation. But why, why is the vaccination a thing now? Why they're saying Nigeria to introduce HPV vaccines to protect girls against cervical cancer? Why has it not been introduced before? Or if it has been introduced, uh, why is it taking so much time to reach everybody? Okay, um, we have uh, so many other vaccines in our national immunization program. Personally, when I lost my mom, because I actually lost my mom to this particular issue, which is what prompted and gave me, you know, the passion to run with this, to see how I can, you know, uh, prevent uh, the pains and the heartbreaks and the vacuums in families. Okay, so when I researched and I saw that uh, this was not actually part of our immunization program, personally, in June, from June 1st, through the change the uh, platform, I was able to, you know, write a petition to federal government, and the the petition is actually gaining traction, and so many signatures actually on on it. So I want to believe this has also been uh, what has prompted the government because they've seen that so many persons are reacting and responding in, in this regard. But prior to this time, I, it was just discussions. You know, uh, we had persons talk about this. We had um, the federal minister of health. They talk about this, they deliberated on it. But I'm, I'm excited that at this point, uh, we are going to be having the vaccines. And this has really been my heart's desire, and I'm excited that that is happening. Okay, doctor, let me, let me come back to you. How, how, how dangerous, maybe it's an irrelevant question because we should know it's dangerous, but how dangerous is this cervical cancer so that the person hearing for the first time will know that something needs to be done promptly when uh, the symptoms present themselves. Tell us how dangerous this uh, uh, cervical cancer is and what to look out for so that people can go for screening fast enough. Okay. So just like every other cancer, the moment you hear cancer, I'm sure your guess will be as good as mine, that anything cancerous or cancer is a dangerous illness. But what makes cervical cancer peculiar is that in early stage, it's asymptomatic. Because that part of the, uh, that part, part of the organ, I told you the cervix, is hidden. It's right there in the upper part of the upper vagina. You can see the cervix which is part of the uterus, the lower segment of the uterus. So the location where it is, is hidden. 
So if something is going on there, you will know. So this is it's asymptomatic when this uh, cancer begins to proliferate and grow. It's asymptomatic. So you will not know what's going on there until when it becomes a full-blown cancer. When it becomes a full-blown cancer, that is when it becomes symptomatic. And that's why, that is when you can identify, ah, something is going on in me. And they can present with bleeding a vagina, meaning you can see blood bleeding from the private parts, from the vagina. Then it can also present with foul smelling vagina, vagina discharge, foul smelling vagina discharge. Then the surface can be eroded with a mask, exfoliating mask. In most cases, the mask can even cover to third of the vagina in advanced cases. And just like you know, any other cancer doesn't limit itself at the at the site of lesion. There is metastasis to other organs. It can metastase to the liver, it can metastase to the brain, it can metastase to other parts of the body, lungs. So it's, it's quite dangerous. So okay. it's important that we know about this. Now, Another important thing. Sorry, I was, I was just going to ask, if, if it is breast cancer, for instance, there are things that you can do in front of the mirror and find out if you have it uh, without even waiting for symptoms to show and everything else. Is it also possible for cervical cancer to, you know, do, do a self-examination uh, and find out whether it is there or not? It, it, it's not possible because the cervix, even for, for your finger to reach the cervix, when you, when you put your finger through your vagina to read the service, you can touch it, but you won't know what is going on there unless you can feel a mass. And when you're feeling a mass, mind you, is already in advanced stage. So it's not possible. And that's the importance of screening. The only tool to identify what is going on there is screening. And that is why women of reproductive age, American Cancer Society recommends that women 25 to 65 years should do cervical cancer screening. It's only through screening you can identify what is going on there. What screening does, if you're not vaccinated, you must get screened. And what screening does is to detect the precancerous lesions. Those lesions that will expose you to cancer in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years. Because cervical cancer is not a day cancer. It doesn't come overnight. It takes years. And it's important to note, too, that this virus, human papilloma virus, that causes cervical cancer, we have have high you know, there's one that are high and low risk there are one that are high and low grade uh, types it's high risk type that can progress to cervical cancer when you are affected by a low risk type it doesn't progress to cervical cancer it can cause benign lesions it's also important to know that this uh virus that causes cancer must not it doesn't it mustn't cause cancer in individuals within two years most of the human papilloma virus even when con uh, when you're when you contract it, can spontaneously resolve. It's only the high risk type that persists, the persistent, the persistent infection that can transform into cancer. And this persistent infection, which are the high risk type, type, type 16, type 18, these are, and others, these are major ones that can progress to high cancer. And so the tool for identifying what is going on there is screening. When you're screened, we have several methods of screening. In Nigeria, being within the reach of our economy, most of the screening is done with either visual inspection with acetic acid, visual inspection with uh, lugol iodine, then up smear, and then we can proceed to do coposcopy, and then histology, biopsy and histology. So in doing screening, if from the screening using pap smear or visual inspection with iodine, if there is, if we dictate any precancerous lesion, then treatment can be offered in what we call screen and treat approach. We can use, there are several methods of abrasive ab methods, like cryotherapy you can use to destroy the lesion. Then if you screen and you're negative to human papilloma virus, it's expected that you should screen every three years using this visual inspection acetic acid, PAPSME, visual inspection with iodine. But if, in a, if you're using human papilloma DNA testing, you're expected to screen every five years. The truth is that if you've been screening every three years, there is no way the cancer can come overnight. Okay. There is no uh, way it can come overnight. Doctor, do doctor, very simply now, um, all these things you're mentioning it sounds like big grammar. And if it's big grammar, it means that it's going to be very expensive. That is the mentality of an average Nigerian. Is it 
affordable, this screening you're talking about, you know, I'm talking affordable not from the, the point of a, a rich man, but affordable to the common man. The, the screening is affordable, but with the nature of Nigerian economy, even if you put up the screening to be 3,000, some people may not still be able to afford it. And that is why we, our NGO, Help the Woman Campaign, has gone beyond taxing to do free cervical cancer screening. Three months ago, we organized free cervical cancer screening and we screened up to 100 women in collaboration with our partner hospital, Family Life Center and VBF Hospital, in Vibitam, Aquaibo State. And we screened over 100 women, and most of them, I have the data which I may not share here, the, what we discovered from them. So we have taken it as a point of duty to do free cervical cancer screening for women who may not afford it because average screening, if at the current cost, average screening might cost, uh, if you have to go through the entire, it will cost between uh, 10,000 to 20,000. It's quite expensive for some people. But that's why we are, why we are working, we're also trying to partner with agencies, international agencies, government, so that this cervical screening we are doing, we can be able to have some funds to offer it to a large group of people, of okay. women. All right. I get it to... Our target is to screen at least one million women in Nigeria every year. At least one million every year. Okay. And by every screen, we target to screen 1,000 women. Okay. All right. Funding. All right. A million, a million women will amount to... Um, million women a year will amount to 200 years before or at least 100 years before you can screen the whole of Nigerian women. So I do hope you get that uh, partnership that will make every every nigerian to be screened and uh, every nigerian to also get the every nigerian woman to get the vaccination the people who are still at that range so let me come to itoro uh, quickly now itoro um what is the level of response like uh, i'm just putting two questions together what's the level of response like from the people that you have been taking this uh, awareness campaign to and uh, you, you know how close are we to getting this vaccine? Because we don't have a particular date that we know right now that this vaccine is going to come. Okay, uh, for the people uh, we actually reach out to, uh, they are usually, you know, scared at first. But of course, because of the strategies and our approaches that we put in place to actually reach out to them, at the end of the day, they are excited, they are happy, and they embrace what we are sharing to them. So we have several, you know, methods, games, engaging them, you know, freebies and ensuring that they are excited about what we're doing. So uh, basically for what we've done for the past two years, I, I must say it, it's exciting. We see the excitement in the faces of the people and they are happy about this issue. Some of them are usually scared because that's the first time, you know, anytime you mention cancer, people are like, oh, uh, Not it's a dead sentence. But of course... <laughs> We usually tell them what this is about and they embrace and they are excited about it. Then for the vaccination, I want to thank the federal government for actually, you know, embracing this. Though I think this is on a temporary basis, my petition actually asks uh, the federal government to actually make it, you know, a permanent thing because when you go to primary healthcare facilities, mostly in remote areas, they barely do not have, you know, anything. Uh, to actually offer this particular service. So I'm um, still, you know, pleading and asking federal government and other agencies to actually make this available, affordable, and accessible. Uh, because this, this... Sorry? Okay, well, um, we lost the audio of Itoro there. Uh, but... Um, we were talking about the fact that uh, this uh, cancer, cancer um, vaccine are going to come up here in Nigeria. So we thank the government for that and we thank your organization for doing what they are doing. We do hope that you get the right partnership to uh, continue this good work and make sure the vaccines are available to all. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show. Thank you.
Well, uh, Thank that's, you, sir. Yeah, that's the much we can take. I wish we had more time, but we are going to do a follow-up if we need to. But the quote for the day today is, Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. That is according to World Health Organization. So be sure that if you can say you are healthy, you will have health in mind and body. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the show. On behalf of the entire crew, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.